Oh hi there, it's me again. Uh, in this video I want to have a quick talk about finding your muse. What do you do when you have writer's block or your inspiration abandons you? So let's get stuck straight into that. Okay, so there's a few things that I want to talk about. Um, there's some obvious ones that I, I want to revisit. So if you're a professional artist, if you are somebody who produces music for a living, um, it's quite likely that you're going to be using a template. And I think there's pros and cons to using templates. Now, I have some friends that do a lot of music for film and TV, and some of their templates are literally hundreds of channels of instances of contact open with all the possible articulations of their orchestral instruments. Now, in that case, I think a template is vital because to set up an instrument set that you need could take you a day. Literally, it could take you a day just to set the project up. So in that case, I think a template is important. But when I used to be making a lot of trance, let's say about 10 years ago, I was using, I think, Cubase 8 at the time, something like that, Cubase 8. Um, no, probably Cubase 6. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But the I had a trance template um, with all of my kick samples put in. I had all my sends, effect sends set up. And although it allowed me to theoretically start a project faster, the way that the, the brain works is your brain likes to do things it's done before. A lot of your brain will work on repetitive, automatic habits. So by opening up that template, I'm automatically going to kind of go down the same road as I did the day before. So I think it's not that templates are best avoided. I'm just suggesting that if you habitually use templates and you're finding creativity a little bit of a struggle, it might be an idea to ditch the template for that day or for that project, or even just for a morning where you just mess around and see what happens. So rather than starting with the template, just temporarily switch it off, un unload it from your project, uh, and see what your brain comes up with just messing around. Right, so slightly connected with ditching the, the template, I would like to suggest the idea that you completely change genre you're making. Even if th this track doesn't go anywhere, uh, let's say for example, I, I, now if you're making uplifting trance, um, changing to tech trance is not gonna make any difference. That it's all basically the same thing really. So the fundamental basis of what you're doing is gonna be more or less the same. It's just a different, slightly different flavor. It's like if you have a, a different flavor packet of crisps, chips if you're in Freedom Units, um, if you have a different flavor, you're still eating crisps, right? You haven't changed your food. So like if you do usually make uplifting trance, try and make some dubstep. St stick with me, stick with me. Now, it's not that you're ever gonna do dubstep, it's, or release a dubstep track, but you will learn something in the process. And recently I did the How To Make Afterlife. I've never made a melodic techno track before. And the one I made was in the same ballpark as a, as, as a, a really good melodic techno track. But I learned a lot about what I was doing in the process. Now, I, I didn't make it as well as these guys that do it professionally, and I wouldn't have expected to on the first go. But there's, there's a learning procedure and there's a creative process that is inherent in learning something new. And that might get those brain neurons firing again. And not even just changing genre. Um, you can do something completely different creatively, like, for example, going out and taking some photographs. You don't have to be a photographer, but we've all, we've all got these things sitting in our pocket, right? Um, and the cameras on them de these days are pretty fantastic. And it allows you to go out and just do something a little bit different, change change your mental scenery, uh, and it might again ignite that little spark of creativity that you seem to be lacking this morning or today. Right, the next thing is about changing the tools that you use. Now, I start almost every project with an instance of Kick2, Anna2, Drum Rack, um, obviously using Ableton Live, and that tends to be 
my habit. And I, I spoke about this just now. Your brain works on habits. There's so much of what you do that's a, a kind of subliminal automatic reaction. And, and the perfect example of that is if you're, if you're driving to a destination, let's say you're driving to work or driving to a place you go to many, 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 many times, you'll often find that you'll arrive there without having any recollection of the journey you just took. And you think, hang on a minute, I've just been driving this vehicle, this two-ton vehicle through narrow, busy streets, and I don't remember doing any of it. Well, that's because so much of it is habitual and automatic. So if you fire up your door with the, with the same tools that you're always using, chances are you're gonna kind of go down the same roads that you've already been down. So for example, I'll give you an example of this. Um, again, I usually start with drum rack. I've got a little project open up here, which is gonna describe another point in a second. But if I come into, let's go into my plugins. I've already got it highlighted here. So pulling in an instance of battery four. Battery four isn't something I ever really use. Oh my God, my push two is really bright. But the good thing about battery is it's got a massive library of very, very, very good drum, drum samples built in. So it might be just a case of Dusty Ganja Kit. Shades of my past there. There's all these weird sounds in it. Uh, so just by shut up just by opening up this new tool you might find a spark of inspiration and we'll, we'll talk further on this in a second but um, not only opening up something like battery use a completely different sample library I know there's things like splice out there and loop masters I'm not a massive fan of these endless subscriptions um, in terms of you know, having this endless supply of samples because you spe you end up spending a load of time just, you know, doing the, the sample face, sample searching face, or your mouth's open, and you kind of switch off. You're going through all these samples and you kind of switch off. But if you go for a specific different library that you haven't used before, um, you'll probably find, and again, we'll touch on this in a second, you'll probably find that you're inspired to go in a different direction than you usually do and this is really what it's about it's about it's not about plowing the same furrow that you've always plowed before and trying to force that to happen i mean if you do music professionally you might have to but it's about trying to ignite these these sparks like for me inspiration is like branches on a tree one branch can spark off into 20 or 30 other branches uh, and I just need that first new branch to appear for all these other ideas to happen. That's, that's how it works for me anyway. So just by using different tools, by swapping out like, right for today, I'm not gonna use that drum machine. I'm not gonna use that synth. I'm not gonna use that sample library. Open up a project with three or four completely different things that you don't usually use. Even if it's stuff included with the door, um, that's a good way to spark these branches as well. Right, the next thing, which I have spoken about before, preset surfing, um, but also sample surfing. This is connected with what I just spoke about, but something I do regularly, and I do this at least once or twice a week, is I'll just open up a sample library, or I'll open up, and in, in this case, I just used the samples included with Ableton Live. So this little icon here, samples, there's thousands, I think, thousands, hundreds at least, thousands of, weird samples um, you can go into packs uh, core library samples and and go in there with different specific kinds of samples but I don't even do that I don't look for drum machines I don't look for atmospheres I just click on samples scroll and I'll just click them on so what happened is I did that I opened up an instance of kick two and an open up an instance of Anna 2. I got myself a kick and a bass line going, but I just preset surfed in Anna 2. So I started with this. But I didn't actually start with that. I started with this atmosphere. So I found that in the Ableton library. Then I found this hi-hat loop. All pretty standard stuff. 
But then I found this weird sample here. Now I would never have probably come up with this by, by myself. And this is the whole point. It's coming up with new stuff or using new stuff that then one branch is opened, sparks three or four other ideas. And this is where I get a lot of creativity from is just doing something different. So I found this sample. <clears throat> now there's no situation that I can think of where I'd be making a normal kind of music for me like synthwave or trance or, or now techno where I would, I would use this sample. But I decided in this case, it was something I wanted to use. Cl slightly weird. Uh, and I'm into Il Infiltrator 2 at the moment by Devious Machines. I love it, kind of weird multi-effects, glitching plugin, does weird things. So when I switched that on, there's a bit of EQ and compression as well. It took it to a different place. So combining that with the first atmosphere I found, And then I found another atmosphere in the Ableton stock library, which I believe I pitched up. Yeah, I pitched up four semitones to match the other things I had going on. So these two atmospheres that I found in the Ableton library uh, panned left and right slightly. And then they are being sent to another instance of Infiltrator on Ascend which is doing something different. It's another, again, I was preset browsing the effects, bit of EQ, compression EQ, and then LFO tool. But to, to solo that, so these two atmospheres being bussed out to another effects generator creating this atmosphere, and then, so it's created this weird, I don't know what genre you'd call it. It's almost housey, but it's not. But the point being here, this isn't something I will turn into a track probably. Uh, it's not something I'll ever use, but it's also not something I would ever have made without finding these random samples in Ableton Live, uh, which is the whole point here, um, is that it's taken me to a place where I wouldn't have got to by myself. And as much as I wouldn't use this in a project, it might be used in a project. It might be that one thing that think, I think to myself, actually, I could do this here and expand on, on this one idea. So really it's about grabbing random sounds from all over the place and seeing what you can come up with. Able to, uh, most doors are gonna have these big sample libraries included in them. Um, and if not, there's there's an endless supply of samples out there and just randomly grab stuff and see what you can do with it. Okay, my last point is about getting out. Now I've mentioned this in a couple of other videos before and I'll keep mentioning it as many times as I possibly can because it's so vitally important. Now connected with this idea that your brain likes to work on these automated habitual patterns, it's it's really essential for me and what I do every morning is I go outside, um, I do my usual morning things, do the school run, take the kids to school, go to Aldi, get myself some meat. And um, then before I start work, I get my, my head out of, the, out of the kind of rat race thing, that thing where you, you have to go to the shop every day, you have to take your kids to school every day. I have to come and work every day. And there's three or four different places where I'll go outside and I'll just be around nature. Now, when I say nature, I don't really mean, I'm not out in the woods or anything, but not being in this room, not being in a car, not being in a supermarket has this huge effect on your, your psyche when it comes to um, getting your head out of that rut. Because every time you go out in nature, I mean, maybe, maybe you do have this big forest near where you live, I don't. Uh, well, I, I do, but it's like a drive away and I haven't got time for that all the time. But every time you go out in nature, you see something different. You experience it differently. The weather's going to be different. You might see a different bird. You might say hello to a different person. There might be a dog fighting with another dog. Whatever it is, you see something different. And that can often be enough to get you out of that groundhog day mode. And I think this is a really important thing to 
to try and grasp onto. Groundhog Day, the movie, wasn't about this guy literally experiencing this time reset. It was kind of describing what we all do and this is how we all live in that we tend to do the same thing every day. And the more you do that kind of thing, the more you live that kind of way, um, the more your brain will just think, well, we did this yesterday, so let's just do this on autopilot. And that's what we're trying to get away from. So going outside and seeing these different things every single day, it turns every single day into a different day. And that's, I think, the main reason for getting out because it can reset that creative process. And again, you know, you've got the phone. Um, take some pictures, take some photographs. That will connect you with your environment. Take pictures of different things every day. And as the seasons change, things look different. Um, and it can just help get out of that rut. So that's pretty much all I've got on finding your muse. Slightly different, I'm hoping, than just obvious examples. But uh, yeah, hope you found this video useful and I'll see you guys again soon. Cheers.